Hi, Pastor Lawson with the Midweek Word. April 1. Some people call it April Fool's Day, but what I'm going to give you today is not an April Fool. It is the uh, unadulterated Word of God. God bless you. Turn the Bible with me to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. I'll give you a moment to find it. I hope you will turn with me in your Bible and look at it with your own eyes. It's so much better when you can see the word as being taught. So I hope you'll take a moment, and I want to be brief today. Take a moment and uh, turn with me to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. And when you get to Romans chapter 2, turn, look at verse 1. Romans chapter 2, verse 1. This Sunday is our resurrection service. If you're in the eastern North Carolina area, you're invited to participate with us in our parking lot at 11 a.m. That's this Sunday, resurrection Sunday. 11 a.m. All right, let's get to it. Romans chapter 2 and verse 1. Romans chapter 2, verse 1. It reads like this. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. If I had entitled this message, I would talk about God's motivation. God's motivation. Now, I don't want to take this scripture out of context because at the very beginning, Paul talks about something. He talks about judging others. Uh, and he says, in essence, in verse one, and I invite you to read this in some other translations, that we shouldn't judge other people. And uh, Paul says right here, when you judge someone else, you're actually condemning yourself because you do the same things. Now, you may not do the exact same thing that somebody else does, but in the eyesight of God, all unrighteousness is sin. So when he says you do the same thing, he's talking about uh, you, you also have something in your life. Uh, I like to say sometimes that somebody else's thing might not be your thing, but all of us have a thing or something that we need to be working on as we look at the righteousness of God in the mirror of the word of God. And uh, what we need to know about judging in a simplest fact is you shouldn't do it. And because what judging tries to do is give you a sense of superiority or a sense of self-righteousness over somebody else who is doing something that is sinful in the sight of God. Actually, when you judge others, you, you're really saying, I'm right and you are wrong. I'm right and you're wrong. And truly, they may be wrong, but it's not our job to judge them. You know, the Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. So judging, judging others puts us in a superior state because someone else's thing may not be our thing, but all of us have a thing that we need to really be working on and working to change. And there's there's somehow when this, this sense of superiority comes on people uh, who judge others harshly, we come to verse three, it says, and think is, and this is a question, or do you think, or thinkest thou, do you think, O man, that judges them which do such things, and you do the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? So a lot of times when people can point the finger at somebody else, they say, well, you know, 
I'm not going to be judged for that, but you're going to be judged for something. All of us are going to stand before the Lord. So uh, we need to understand that we shouldn't judge. I want to say that because I want to put the scripture in context. We're in a day now when so many people, especially preachers, take scriptures totally out of context and, uh, and don't explain the surrounding text. So I want to just say that. But what I really want to talk about is the latter part of verse 4. The latter part of verse 4 gives us God's motivation. God's motivation. Now, God is good, and he is good to all. He is good to saint and sinner as well. He has some special things for his children, but he's good to the sinner because he doesn't just wipe sinners out, uh, but he, he shows mercy. And he shows kindness, even the sinners. And he has a motivation. He's, he's merciful and kind to us because he has a motivation. In other words, there's a reason why he does it. He says right here that in the latter part of verse 4, that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance. The goodness of God. So God's goodness has a motivation the motivation, the reason God is good to all is because he wants us to come to the place of repentance. Now, let me ask you a question. And uh, this is designed to provoke thought, which will later provoke action. The question is, uh, and don't answer it quickly. Just, just take a Salah moment and think about it. And that is, is God good to you? Is God good to you? Let me, is God good to you? Take a minute and think, what has God done good for you lately? Is God good to you? What has God done lately that demonstrates his goodness towards you? And you know, a lot of people say, oh yeah, God's good and God's good to me. Yeah, God's good. Well, just take a minute and pause. What, 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 what did he do good for you yesterday? You know, what did he do good for you today? Uh, you know, what's a major uh, uh aspect of God's goodness that has been displayed in your life recently. All right. Now, now here's what we want you to see from, from this word. I ask you that to think now in return for God's goodness, what have you done or what have you rendered to God? You know, people say, well, yeah, God's good to me. God did this for me. God did that for me. God healed my body and God paid my bills. All right. In return, what have you rendered back to God? What, what have you done to show you really appreciate God's goodness? All right, well, some people say, well, well, Pastor Lawson, what can I do? God is God. He has everything. What can I do? Well, you know, the main thing God wants from us is obedience. He wants to be obedient children. He, he doesn't want us to be fashioned after the world uh, like we were, in, as the Bible says, in our former ignorance before we were enlightened through Holy Spirit and through the word, he wants us to obey him. So God wants you to in turn obey him. And, uh, and Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, why do you call me Lord? You don't do what I say. So that's what God wants us to render back to him is obedience. So therefore, when God is good to us and he's good to us, even though we're not always good, we're not always obedient. He has a motivation and the motivation is in this scripture. God's goodness is designed to lead men and women, boys and girls, to repentance. All right, if God's good to you, what can you do back? Then I can, get, I can understand that repentance before God is a, is a lifestyle. It's not something I just do at a revival that I did 10 years ago when I said I was saved, but no, it's a lifestyle. My response to God's goodness is to comply with his motivation because the goodness of God is designed to lead us to the place of repentance. Repentance is the place where we change our mind and then we then turn to God uh, in, in seeking righteousness and holiness and obedience to God. That's repentance. It's a change of mind which leads to a change of action. So God's goodness is designed, listen to what I'm going to say, uh, you, you, just, you just talked about how God has been good to you. Well, what have you done back? Listen to what I'm going to tell you. God's goodness is designed to lead men to repentance and not to sin. 
it's designed to lead you to repentance and not to sin. So then when God is good to us and he, and he just blows our mind, does things that we know we don't deserve, we know we're living better than we live in, uh, that should bring about a sense of awe and respect in us to say, well, I want to do something back to God. I want to render something back to God. I want to render him a lifestyle that he desires from me. I want to live, I want to render back to him holiness and righteousness. He's given me Holy Spirit to help me live a better life. So I want to repent. And I want to make it a lifestyle. Now, now this is what you got to get. God is not necessarily close to perfect people because they're not perfect people. But truly, God looks at the heart and God looks and God looks in favor toward people who have repentant hearts. Their heart is always in the place where I'm, re I'm, I'm ready to to render my heart and not my outer garments or not my outside. God looks at the heart. I, I'm, I'm willing to have a change of heart. Now, this change of heart. This repentant spirit is what causes saints to grow. Now, there are a lot of people in the church who aren't growing. They have, and the reason they don't grow is because they don't respond to God with repentance. See, when you repent, when there is something that you've been doing and then God just lavishes his goodness on you. And see, God isn't crazy. He isn't crazy. He isn't, he isn't being good to you just so you can just take advantage of him and say, well, I'm, I got this, God did this, and I'm going to do what I want to do anyhow. I'm going to do what I want to do anyhow. And can't nobody tell me nothing. The preacher can't tell me nothing. Nobody can't tell me nothing. And, and, and then we get to the point where we don't understand God has a motivation. He's good to you because he's trying to lead you to repentance, to a change of mind. The change of mind is if, if God is good. If God is this good on this level, Wonder how it'd be if I really start trying to live a life that is pleasing to him. Wonder what would happen if I start dealing with some things that I'm dealing with. And, and, and you can't go around comparing yourself with other people. I did a business transaction today and a man was uh, at the place where I was and he was doing a business transaction and he made a statement. He said, uh, this lady did this for me and, and I, I bought something from her and found out she really didn't own it. And now, and, and now I got to go back and try to get my money back. And then he said, and she was a church lady too. Now that was trying to say, that was trying to say, what he was trying to say was, you know, my goodness, uh, she who is a church lady did this. And then he judged her for that. But all the time he was sitting there cussing and doing everything else ungodly. And that, in his mind, made him look good in this transaction because here he is not even claiming anything. Here's a church, a church, a church lady who has done him wrong. But that still doesn't change his, his aspect. That's why the Bible says you shouldn't judge. So therefore, what God wants us to do is understand that the, the truth and the fact that God will forgive sin. He will forgive sin. That should... That should motivate us to seek forgiveness so we can then please God. It should motivate us to seek forgiveness, not to just say, well, this is just the way I am and I do this and other people do this. Forget about other people. It's you and God. It's you and God. So, so, so we think sometimes that if we just go out and sin, we think God just going to overlook it and, and, and then we, he's just going to forgive sin and the Bible says that's what you call despising God's goodness. It's right in the text. That's what you call despising God's goodness. You, you, you are taking, <clears throat> excuse me, you're taking the goodness of God when you do that and you're actually making a sham out of it. You are making a mockery out of it. You're making it a thing of indulgence. It's, it's like you, you take the grace of God and see the grace. Here's what the grace of God says. The grace of God says repent. The grace of God does not say repeat. I'm going to say that again. The grace of God says repent. It does not say repeat. And see, a lot of us think the grace of God means, you know, means I can just go out and do it again and do it again and do it again. And we think it means repeat. But the grace of God means repent, which is a change of mind, which leads to a change of actions and a change of attitude, which leads to a change of conduct. So we should constantly be in a state of repentance before God as he begins to show us things as he's good to us. Anyhow, we, God isn't crazy. We don't make a mockery out of God's goodness. We don't despise the goodness of God by going out and just continuing in sin. 
uh, as the Bible says, that grace may abound. Paul says, no, we, we don't do that. And not just think God just going to overlook and forgive it, even though we're wrong. You're mistaken if you have that attitude. And there are a lot of people in the church today that have that attitude. That's why the church now is so indulgent of sin. That's why sin has come right in the church. And a lot of people in the church doing the same thing the world is doing because, because we need to understand God does not condone it. He doesn't want us to indulge in it. And God does not give license to sin. He doesn't give license to sin. But God's going to judge, judge everybody. And here's what it says. Here's what we can be assured of. Verse 2 says, we can be sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. God's going to judge it. It's not going to be overlooked. So the fact that God allows men to repent should then, and then, and then because of the, the fact that God is good to us. Now I just told you, think about, think about how good God's been to you. God's just good. Cause you know why he's good, but he has a motivation. His motivation for his goodness is to lead us to say, well, if God's this good to me, I need to, I need to do better. You know, God, what do you want me to change? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to forsake? What do you want me to give up as a result of how good you are? I mean, what do you want me to render to you, you know, in light of your goodness, in light of how good you've been to me? So it should bring you to the point where it should stir your heart to repent, not to indulge, but to repent, not to repeat, but to repent. See? So therefore, it comes to the place where we need to do what the Bible says. We need to confess our imperfections. We need to confess them before the Lord. Not excuse them, confess them. And after we confess them, let go of self-righteousness. Let go of judging others. Get, let go of, of, of comparing your life to other people. See what I'm saying? So you got you to you confess your imperfections and confess your self-righteous spirits. And then you got to seek God's righteousness, which is in Christ Jesus, the Lord. So that's what the Bible says. God has a motivation. God's good to you for a purpose. See, God's good to you for a purpose. He wants that to lead you to, mo to repentance. And as you repent, you begin to lay aside every weight and those sins that so easily beset you. See, and the church doesn't want to talk about sin. We just want to talk about blessings and things coming to you and all that kind of stuff. That's what's got people messed up, and that's going to get people messed up. But God, God is not winking. He wants men everywhere to repent. See, the axe has been laid to the root of the tree, and God said, now I want people to bring forth fruit, you know, this, this meat to repentance, and that's the fruit of the Spirit. That's what you're supposed to be bringing forth. We'll talk about that, too, later on. And so, that, so then, therefore... The fact that God would allow us to repent should stir us inside. And the fact that God is good to us, it ought to stir us on the inside to the place where we do what 1 John 1 and 9 says. And it's right there. He says, if we just confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and hear this and cleanse us. And that's what that's where the cleansing comes. The cleansing comes when you when you confess it. When you confess it, you're getting it out in the open. You know, you're saying it to God. God, I confess this before you. That's getting it out. And that's what causes God to cleanse you. But to go around and be self-righteous and look at them. Look what they're doing. And comparing yourself and judging other folk rather than judging yourself. If we judge ourselves, we, we shouldn't even have to be judged. But we want to we wanna judge everybody else instead of what? Instead of looking at what we do. And the Bible says, here's, the, here's where you grow. This is why saints don't grow. Because saints just get on one level and say, well, I'm, I'm saved and I'm bending so-and-so and I'm bending this. And then you compare yourself among yourself. But no, you're supposed to get in this word and see what the word says and allow Holy Spirit to bring conviction as to what you want to change that will take you to a higher level. Because God's always calling you up higher. And this is where the growth comes. When a child grows, they get taller and taller and taller till they come to the full stature. And that's what God wants us to do, come to the full stature, not just keep entertaining and indulging in things that he says is sin. God is good to us and God's goodness has a motivation. He's, he's trying to, he, 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 the reason he's good to us, he wants it to lead us to repentance. He wants us to lead us to repentance.
Yeah, so confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and then he cleanses us, get what we get cleaner and cleaner and get, we live a holier and more uh, uh, sin-free life. And that's what he's after, to live in front of, especially the world, people who are not saved. It's a bad thing when we live in this like the world and we're not letting our light shine in these dark and evil days. So God's motivation for being good to you, and you, you thought a few minutes ago about how God's been good to you. His motivation is he wants that to lead you to actual repentance, to change. And see, the will of God for everybody to say is that we will be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, conformed to the character of Jesus Christ. So we're supposed to be we're supposed to be transformed and not conformed. And most saints today are conformed to the world. And the Bible says we're supposed to be being transformed by the renewing of our mind, which the mind is the place of repentance where you change. And the entrance of the word gives light and you know this is what I'm doing is not the will of God. I need to change. I need to repent and go in another direction. God is good, amen, and his goodness gets gooder and gooder and gooder because he's a good God and God is good all the time and his goodness in your life is a motivation to bring you to repentance. Don't let your heart get hard. God looks at the heart. Don't let your heart get hard. I was thinking over there about somebody I had to just give a little, a little mild correction to at church. They were doing something that was going against the grain of what of what the whole scheme of things was at church. And I, I gave a mild, I mean, it's very mild, because you gotta be careful how you correct folk now, because people won't take correction. I gave a mild correction. He ain't been back to church. Hmm. See, that's hard-heartedness. That's hard-heartedness. God, goodness, God is good, and God is good to him, good to me. So that makes us want to want to repent. You know, we just want to repent and say, God, Keep your heart soft and pliable before God. And God will bless you because he, he loves people that have contract spirits and hearts. He's close to people like that. Not, not perfect people, not everybody who dots every I and crosses every T, but people who know that I need God in my life. He's been good to me. And because of that, I want to change. It stirs me in my heart to want to be more like Jesus. That's the midweek word. I could go on, but I, I want to make this one brief. God bless you. Uh, hope your April 1st has been good. To jump and run, hope to see you all in the parking lot on, on Sunday to get the word of God on Resurrection Sunday. Pastor Lawson here. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. We look forward to talking to you again real soon.